Hey there YouTube, it's your girl Kristen here. I'm a licensed esthetician, an educator, mentor, YouTuber, and a mom. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially if you're also an esthetician, beauty entrepreneur, content creator, that is all welcome here. And if this is your first time tuning in, you are in for a treat. I've been working on a series where I've been dropping all the tips and gems on how to create a successful YouTube channel in 2022. I've shared with you what you need to consider before starting a YouTube channel, also also how to gain that first thousand subscribers, how to get monetized, start making the Benjamins, and also how to build your confidence on camera. All those things have kind of led up to this point because the reason why I started this series was because I was getting a ton of questions regarding how to film a facial video and my video setup. So I will be sharing with you the equipment I use, the actual setup itself, tips for preparation before you start filming your facial video, and then I'll be closing out the video right back here with some kind of final thoughts for you guys. Make sure you grab that pen and paper and continue watching. Hey you guys, so I am here in my studio getting ready for my client Michelle who's gonna be my facial model today for the video. I wanted to kind of run through really quickly what I prepare in advance for the video because I feel like if I'm gonna show you how I do this, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step breakdown of like how to prepare for it as well because this is also a very important part of video setup. First and foremost, I do have a photograph and video release form. Basically what this is going to cover is that authorizing you to take, fo take photos, take videos, and that they're releasing their rights to that content. Nobody can come back at you after maybe that that video got like a million views and they're like, hey, you know, I was the one who was the model in that video, I should be getting compensated. This is what ensures that they don't have any rights over to any content or footage that you take of them. I definitely highly recommend doing that, especially if you're gonna be filming for YouTube in particular, where you're gonna be getting compensated for it. Cause you just never know. You never know if people are gonna, I don't know, come at you for something. So far, it hasn't happened. I don't think it ever really will, but it's just good to cover your base. Along with having the waiver, obviously you need to have your equipment ready to go. What I make sure the night before is I have my cameras charged. I go through my SD cards, which I highly recommend getting the largest SD cards that you can find, which I believe are 128 gigs. Make sure that you have those all cleared out, ready to go, so that while you're in the middle of filming, you don't run into space or data issues. Avoid that, make sure you have enough space in your phone. Right now I do have my phone right here charging. I recommend if you are gonna be using your phone to make sure your phone has the largest space possible. So I did invest in that. I'm gonna put right here what my phone has because I don't remember. But I also have it synced to iCloud. So whatever I film is gonna be saved onto iCloud, which does fill up as well. I have the two terabyte option and I go and I fill that all the time. So I had to actually this morning go and delete like a bunch of stuff to kind of make some more space for for what we were filming today. I will be showing you guys in a little bit my my setup, but in order to make and keep things organized, I actually have a case that I carry all of my filming equipment in. So let me show you. So I ordered this off Amazon. It's a backpack that has like a hard shell case, but it's, it's really, really comfortable when you wear it. It opens up and it has some really like cool like compartments already put into it and like zippers and you know it just keeps everything really organized and safe because I found that when I was filming I had like all of my stuff just everywhere so this keeps it really um, in place and just organized and safe. That equipment is worth you know thousands so you want to make sure you keep that in mind. Um, this is from Amazon of course everything that I'm going to be showing you guys in this video today is going to be from well not all of it's from Amazon. It'll be in the links down below. I think it's under vlogging and filming equipment. <laughs> I want to say that that's the, that's the link that it's in. So the next thing you want to have prepared is you're going to want to know what service you're going to be performing. So obviously here we're doing a facial video, but what products are you going to be using? What concern are you going to be targeting and trying to talk about in your video? Also you want to decide whether or not you're going to have actual live 
um, talking in the video or if it's just going to be a quiet like ASMR type style video. Keep in mind if you are going to have voices or things like that in the video, you're going to want to make sure you keep the room completely quiet. Don't play music in the background because then you run the risk of copyright issues and you don't want your hard work to just be thrown down the toilet because you forgot to turn off music. <laughs> Yes, I've done that. Uh, make sure you have enough time set aside as well. I do performance during the work day because I honestly just don't have any other time to to make it work in my schedule. So I do plan it during a work day, but I give myself about 30 minutes buffer before and after the actual filming session. So if you wanna give yourself at least an hour to an hour and a half to actually film, make sure you're timing that out correctly because one, you have to consider your setup time and then you have to consider your breakdown time and then also be on time for your, for your guests. If ideally you can plan this out where it's on a separate day where you're not working on clients, that probably would be ideal especially maybe your first like couple videos where you're getting the hang of it because trust me like it's it definitely takes some getting used to because there's just so much that goes into it be sure you do that Ooh, my client is calling me right now so let's get this started i will see you guys in a little bit um, all right y'all we're about to start the setup of the facial video so we have our lovely model, Michelle, here. I had her just, you know, disrobe like how any I would any other service. Um, and then once I get the actual tripod and everything set up, then I'll kind of direct her more as far as like positioning and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my main tripod, which is um, my Glamcore light here. So that's gonna be kind of where like the main camera is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting that up. Okay, I turned off the light because it wasn't working, that lighting, but anyways, I'm setting up the tripod of the Glamcore here on the left side because that's where I have uh, the ability to still move around. So when you're filming, you, you don't want to be stuck in one place because you're still going to have to be able to like grab product or do the massage and things like that. So um, put it on the side of the table that you still have like a pathway um, to move around. And then as far as the table height itself, um, make sure it's not too high because even though the tripod can get pretty high, the higher that you place it, the more wobbly it can be. So the Glamcore, the Multimedia X one, which is the one I'm using because they have different levels of it, it comes with an attachment for the camera or your phone. So today I'm going to use my phone since we're using my camera for the video. So I'm going to use the um, phone attachment. Alright, so here we are and make sure when you're setting up your tripod that it's not touching the table at all because um, if you move the table, then it's going to make the tripod wiggle and then it'll mess up your angle that you're going to preset. So now I grab my stool because I'm short and I'm going to set it here, get a little taller and I'm actually going to put the camera facing downwards because the front camera, it's usually not as good of quality. so. Um, and then I also place it um, this this way, so not the lens on the farther side. So the lens needs to be as close to the model model's face. I'm gonna turn it on. Kind of turn it up a bit. Okay, so let me bring you guys a little closer. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of be like adjusting this so that um, it's nice and centered on her. So I'm gonna put it in video mode because it's actually a different angle for video than it is for photo. And be kind of getting up and down, moving it around. I'm gonna tell her to like kind of scoot a little oops so now I'm gonna tell her to kind of scoot a little bit more to your left just a bit more okay yeah not too far okay and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what it actually looks like on the phone in just a sec let me just get it Okay, 
So here's what we're looking like right now. So hopefully we can focus in on that. But as you can see, she's nice and centered. We do kind of have it more zoomed out only because you want to be able to kind of crop it if you need to, to make it perfectly centered. Because I also use this footage for Instagram. So you do kind of want it more, a little more zoomed out so that when we crop it in that vertical angle, that you're still able to see her whole face and whatnot. So that's what it's looking like right here. As far as the actual settings, um, what's cool about this one is you can set the temperatures of the light differently. So if you want it more cool, you can do it cooler. If you wanna do it warmer, you can. So I kinda do it in the middle so that it's not too warm or too cool. And then as far as brightness, let me see. So for brightness, I'm gonna put it at one, two, three, four. So, and then as far as where these go, you kinda want it to be a little bit bent downwards. Go ahead and check the angle again since we moved that. Still looking good. Okay, so that's camera A. I also have a camera B that I'm gonna put here on the side. So I'm gonna stop the recording and then I'll get back to you guys after I set that one up. Okay, so this is my camera B. This is a Canon Rebel T6i and the lens is an 18 to 55 millimeter been using it for a while um, so I'm gonna place this here and it's gonna be to the side obviously we're gonna lower that a little bit here's camera B set up on a separate tripod that I got from Amazon and we're putting it kind of low and then what's cool about this tripod is that it can actually adjust to where the camera can tilt either downward or upward so we're gonna adjust it I'll check back in once we do that all right so now we tilted it um, okay, so similar to the iPhone, you want to make sure that the, um, the model is going to be right in the center here and that you have enough space to crop it if you need to. And then as far as focus, so what I do is I go ahead and I pre-focus it on her and then I'm going to be going and switching this into manual so that it stays focused on her because when we use the steam sometimes it can kind of make the lens go a little crazy and it's trying to refocus all the time. So I keep it on manual focus for the whole video until I actually need to specifically maybe zoom in on something or adjust it. and you can always you know manually zoom in or out on this camera. So that's what we're working with. That's a simple setup. Sometimes I use a mic. I'm still kind of figuring it out a little more on how to use the mic. So that's why I didn't include it in this one because I don't want to show you guys the wrong thing. But having a mic would be really cool. <laughs> She's like, uh, can you start my facial? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna start, we're gonna start, I swear. Okay. All right, I'm gonna be propping you guys up right here. Okay, so I'm gonna prop you guys up right here and as I'm working on this video, I'm gonna be kind of checking in with you. Michelle probably wants to get her facial now, so let's go. Okay, so while the steamer is getting warmed up, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking some shots, like before shots of Michelle. So now we got some like kind of filler shots for the beginning of the video when I do my voiceover and I talk about you know what kind of treatment we're going to be doing and what skin type she has things like that you just want some kind of filler footage so that's why I always kind of capture that in the beginning. Alright finally the steamer is going so I'm going to be placing this and I kind of angle it from underneath. and make sure to press record. Okay, so 
steam is going. Like I said, I'm kind of I kind of angled it from underneath. And I also want to make sure that the steamer isn't touching the tripod or the table either. So now I'm also going to be starting camera B. Also throughout the video, you're going to want to make sure that you're showing the products that you're using, especially if you want to showcase certain products or ingredients, things like that. So I'm going to actually put it toward camera A on top. And I hold it there for about six to ten seconds. And then you also want to kind of get those yummy shots, so if you can show the product itself. a little awkward because you have the light right here in your face <laughs> so you kind of have to be a little bit farther away than you normally would during the service but you make it work As I'm filming, I'm also doing clips, so I'm not doing straight long clips. I'm trying to break it up so that when you're uploading it and you're editing it, you're using a more manageable size file. Also try to make sure that the clips are in focus, especially on top with the iPhone um, because it does have that uh, self-adjusting focus. So you want to make sure that once you place the product there and you're showing that, that you back that out and then you go and you click on the person's face so that it refocuses on the client. Whew, so we're done and that filming session took about an hour and 20 minutes so perfect timing yeah I'll continue this video in a little bit see I told you guys you wouldn't be disappointed I was just working on editing this footage and honestly I was a little bit worried because it was kind of done so quickly as I told you guys I filmed my facial videos during a work day so I literally had just that buffer and the filming time to film this content. So hopefully it was detailed enough. If you do have any other specific questions, make sure you pop them down below. So I wanted to close out the video just with some final thoughts. I know filming a facial video can be a bit of a project. If you're able to make extra time for yourself to film and to edit, especially your first couple videos, that is highly recommended because regardless of you watching this video, you're gonna have some slip ups, you're gonna have some mistakes along the way and that's totally normal. So don't beat yourself up about it. I I've been saying in this series, repetition is the key to mastery. So the more facial videos you film, the better and better they're gonna get. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Be sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, share it with someone that you know could benefit from it. And also comment below with any questions. I will see you guys back here on Monday next week for that next video. And until then, I love you, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.